you guys just a quick video on a piece of your movement guide. Um, warning, this video contains lots of spoilers for the game Peaks of Yore if you don't want to be spoiled and have a completely um, non-spoilery playthrough, please click out of this video. If you're still here, this is just a movement guide tutorial on how I do the movement techniques in my speedruns. Um, I kind of had a person ask me about creating a video like this just so they can learn, so um, I'll try and jam this in a couple minutes. So the first thing that you're going to want to need to do before you're able to do this movement tech is make sure you have all the pieces to actually do the movement tech in the first place. There are a couple key items that you need. Um, if you're playing through the game normally, you've most likely finished the first book, maybe the second, and gotten to the third book. Um, if you're at this point, the items that you'll need after completing the first book are the coffee. And the way you get the coffee is by completing Grey Gully as well as the twins. You'll have to interact with the NPCs there and they'll give you a cup of coffee that you're able to drink from. This isn't super important throughout the run but it does help with some of the beginning parts of each jump um, as well as if you want to take the game a little bit slower and just be able to drink coffee before your jumps. The next item that you'll need is crampons. Crampons are items that you acquire after Old Grove Scalp. They'll be sent to you answer the door. These are the most necessary piece of tech in the game. Um, piece of your doesn't start until you get this item. Um, originally you'll get these six point crampons after you complete three peaks in the third book you will be sent ten point crampons and these are basically buffed crampons. If you're not sure what these are these basically allow you to take a jump off of whatever mountain wall you're on. Um, that I'll get more into the mechanics of that in a little bit. Um, another item that you're going to want to need is not in the first book, it's actually in the second book. After you've completed a couple peaks in the second book, you'll unlock the pocket watch. Um, after you get all ten trials done on the boulders, so that's basically complete each of these times listed. If you do it faster on all ten, then one of the old men will give you a smoking pipe. This basically allows you to fly further in the air passively. It just puts a little pipe in your mouth. So now I'll get into the movement tech. So I see a lot of people, whenever they're just starting the game, uh, they tend to just try and hold space and then let go at the right time and clean themselves up. Um, if you don't have the crampons or anything else unlocked, just a piece of advice for trying to get those higher holds. Um, hold down S and space bar at around the same time. It'll actually arc you in an upward momentum, where if you do it, and then keep on pulling yourself upward, you gain much, much more height rather than just holding space and flying up like that. Um, one big movement tech as well, it doesn't seem too important right now, but later on once we add more momentum it's going to help a lot, is spamming. So in the game, um, you actually gain momentum if you spam your hands, and this is just by spamming both triggers as you can see in the corner. Um, you can see that you do gain, looks like a little jump mid-air, that is just the momentum kicking in from spamming. Um, this can help a lot whenever you're on walls. For instance, that jump that I did, where I used the S and jump, this is without reaching out and spamming. This is with spamming. Um, I can almost reach that second jump just from adding one little piece of movement tech, which is just spam and grab. Um, another way to gain a little more height is making sure your hands are in the correct placement. Um, don't have your hands spread out like this and try and do a swing. You see how limited my movement is? Make sure that your hands are in the same spot so that way you can get a better swing. Um, if you do get a good enough swing, I can probably reach that one up there um, without even trying to spam grab, but I'll do it anyway. So you're able to reach it without even using any crampons. Um, again, I do have the pipe, so that helps a little bit, but you're still able to do this kind of jump in your normal playthrough um, without using any movement tech. So very good to know um, just for normal play. Um, this tech is also pretty nice whenever you don't actually have a wall to cramp on off of, because you do need a solid wall to be able to do the jump. Um, the main piece of tech that allows you to actually fly so high is using your crampon, which basic is control. If you're playing the game normally and not rebinding, it's just control. 
and then pressing space, which is your jump button. There is a little bit of a timing on pressing both. I usually like to do control space, uh, quick succession, like you'll see. Um, pair this with either a swinging jump or coming off of a back like that. You fly super high in the air, not even spam clicking or anything like that. Pair that with a swing as well. While spam clicking, I can almost reach the second tier up there. Another important piece of the crampons is you can actually keep on using your crampons as long as you have upward momentum. So for instance, that same jump, I can crampon again and almost reach the top. Um, again, I just didn't do it properly at this point. I can easily reach the top just by using those two, if not further. Um, so again, as long as you are having upward momentum, as long as you're not falling directly down on a, on a hill like this, then you can keep on cramponing for at least two to three times. Um, if you're on a sloped edge, you can keep on going almost infinitely on some edges. You might not go a whole lot because you're going to keep on losing momentum over time, but you can still keep on going. Um, this tech is also useful on maps that have long horizontal climbs. Um, for instance, Land's End, um, you can actually wall run as long as you're moving this way with your momentum and not going down. You can keep, you can cram usually cramp on jump one or two times like this. And like that, I'm on the opposite side of the lighthouse because I did a wall run. And you can do it again on that side. So very useful for trickier jumps um, or long horizontal areas. Another item that is really nice for vertical ascents is your pickaxes. And these are unlocked for the final two climbs of the game. Um, these, for me, add a lot of increased verticality for certain parts of the game. Um, I would say if you're going for, you know, you want to do some speedruns not super detailed on it, I would just use hands, spam hands. Really, really good way. The only reason pickaxes are better is that they give you a little bit more forward momentum whenever you're spamming them. You're not spamming them like your hands, there's actually a rhythm to it. As long as you get this rhythm down, you actually get a little bit more momentum whenever you spam. Um, this makes it so whenever you cramp on jump, you actually get higher distance from spamming since your forward momentum is going faster up rather than slowly going up like you do with spamming hands. So the key presses for that would be start on your hands as you can't grab with pickaxes on a normal map. Do a crampon jump by hitting control space while you're midair. Switch out your pickaxes, which binded one and two normally. That's what I do. Once you do that midair, swap out, spam in the rhythm, and you can keep on crampon jumping. I got two there. You could probably get three, uh, but they probably wouldn't be as you wouldn't get as high. Um, so that's the basic movement tech for Peaks of Yore. Um, as far as horizontal movement, the pickaxes aren't as good. Um, and for a lot of different angles, they aren't as good as well. Um, you're better off using hands. But for straight vertical areas like this, pickaxes are extremely good. Definitely the best to have. So the best place to showcase kind of momentum with pickaxes as well as on sloped angles is the twins. So normally on this map you have to ascend between these two peaks and eventually climb to the top of this one. However, with everything that I've discussed as far as crampon jumping, spamming pickaxes, continuing crampon jumping, you can actually reach the top of this peak and jump to this one without ever touching a hold. Um, it does take a little bit of practice and finessing, but as long as you're on an angled slope and you keep on spamming to keep your momentum from going backwards, you can keep on spamming. So I'm still hitting an edge and I'm able to keep on jumping up. Um, you've therefore basically bypassed the entire map without actually having to play it. Um, from here, you can do a simple jump to this way, do a crampon jump, spam hands, and you're at the top. So again, this movement tech is really powerful in a normal playthrough. Um, if you once you have all these tools though for instance if I didn't have the pickaxes I didn't have the crampons this movement tech is a lot harder if not impossible um, the six point crampons which are the ones you get before they're upgraded um, they are nice the only main downside of having them is it's a lot harder to do more crampon jumps typically you can only get one in maybe two if it's two it's gonna be really weak it just doesn't give you as much momentum 
um, so the movement doesn't really peak haha <laughs> um, until after you beat three of the th uh, third books peaks um, once you get that the game opens up it's a lot more fun for sure the game I think starts once you unlock all of these pieces of the puzzle and that you'll need all of that for the final climbs if you haven't gotten there yet um, so that's it that's pretty much it not too too much um, again basically control jump for crampon jumps hand spamming pickaxe spamming at this rhythm I'll do it for a couple seconds so you can see if you want to use coffee at the beginning of your jumps or if you're unsure about jumps it does help quite a bit um, but again, if you're going for speed run times, it's not typically the best to be drinking coffee at every hold you're unsure of. You kind of just have to throw yourself at it. So that was um, the movement text of Peaks of Yore. If you have any questions or follow-up um, questions about the tech, feel free to comment below and I'll get to it. Um, this will probably be my only commentary video on this game, um, as I'll be attempting any percent runs. And if everything goes well, maybe run at SGDQ this year. But we shall see. Thanks again for watching.